Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on vectors. Now in particular this presentation deals with determining the distance between a given point and a given line. And the idea involves um, an idea from previous uh, videos involving the dot product and the scalar and vector projection of one vector on another. So we'll talk about how we derive this distance between a point and a line and I'll give you an example. So let me share my screen with you and uh, we can start. All right, so the easiest way to start off is just to basically draw a picture. Suppose I've got a line, okay? Let's call it, say, um, L. Okay. And I've been given, say, a point B. And I want to determine the distance from this point to this line. Now, when we talk about uh, distance between a point and a line, we're talking about the minimum distance or the perpendicular distance. So what I can do is just draw a little line segment that connects with B and crosses the line L such that that little line segment is perpendicular to the line. Okay, so, so we're calculating the minimum distance there or the perpendicular distance. Okay, so, so how do we actually come up with this? Well, we're going to use vectors to do it. And um, in previous videos, we talked about how we can describe a line using a parametric vector form. Now, the, this parametric vector form just involves a position vector of, say, a point A on the line. Say it's there. And this V is a vector that is parallel to the line. So let's say it's, say, there. All right, and the lambda is the parameter. Okay, well, how do I actually um, find this distance? Well, what I can do is draw a little right angle triangle. If I connect A and B, and I know the point A and I know the point B, then I have this right angle triangle. Now I can just use Pythagoras' theorem to, to, to relate the lengths of the three sides. Okay, so let's make the point where, where this sort of line segment and this line meet, the point on the line be P. All right, so I've got the, the triangle, say, A, B, P now. Okay, well, how can I, how can I um, um, work out this length here? Well, if I know the length AP and the length AB, then I can just use Pythagoras' theorem to actually come up with the length uh, BP. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, you can see from down here, the, the length of, say, this vector PB, which is the, the length that we want, involves this thing here, which involves a dot product. And in fact, this is really the square of a special... Uh, concept called the scalar projection. So let me just re refresh your memory. The dot product of two vectors is just you multiply the corresponding components together and you add up all the terms. You can relate the angle between two vectors with the dot product in the following way. So there's cosine of the angle is the dot product divided by the product of the lengths of the two vectors. We talked about scalar projection of one vector A on another vector B is the dot product of A and B divided by the length of B, which is also this form here from the previous slide. And if we want to have a vector projection of a vector A on vector B, well, it's just the scalar projection times a unit vector in the same direction as the vector B. Okay, now we're going to use those ideas in... Uh, trying to calculate the vector AP. All right. So I'm given, I, I know A, I know B. I'm trying to calculate this length here. 
To do that, I really need the length AP. Okay, so if I look closely up here, the vector AP is the vector projection of this vector on the vector V, which we know. We know the vector AB and we know the vector V. So in this kind of notation, okay, that, that green vector would be that here. Okay, all I do is I realize that the vector AP is the vector projection of the vector AB on the, the known vector V. Okay. Now, if I write it out, say, using uh, any of these um, forms, it'll be the following. So let me just sort of rule that down there. Okay. That is just... this, okay, and so what's the length of this? Well, it's the scalar projection if I take the magnitude or the, um, the length of this, this is a unit vector, right, this has length 1, so I take the absolute value of this and that will disappear, that will just become 1, okay, Okay, so I can just do this. Okay. All right, so this looks like a big mess here, but it's just Pythagoras' theorem. All right, so let me show you where this comes from. I claim that the distance from a point B to a line L is this thing here, where P is the point here that sort of lies on the line with the perpendicular um, nature here. So let's prove this. By Pythagoras, we've got a right angle triangle here. We know that this length squared equals this length squared plus this length squared. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, PB squared. Okay. All right, well, I know what A and B, B is, so it's no problem to calculate this. I've got the vector AP up here and the length of it there, so I'll square that. And PB is what I'm chasing. So if I rearrange that, I'll get this. Yeah, so that's there, or, and this is, th these two things are going to be equal. Okay, so if I square that, well, that will just give me the following. Okay, if I square that, I can put a square there, but remember when, you, when you're like squaring something, you, you can actually get rid of the by these things, I mean absolute value signs. So I can actually get rid of those. Okay. So I can write it like this. Okay. So that... Is, is how this thing occurs. It's just Pythagoras' theorem and um, vector or scalar projection, whichever one you want to go through. I, I calculated the vector projection first and then went to the scalar projection, but it's up to you, really. Okay? So not difficult, just Pythagoras' theorem, and you've got to know a little bit about projection or vector projection or scalar projection, whatever, however you, whichever one you want to use here. Okay, let's...
go through and do an example and see how it works in practice. Calculate the distance between the given point B, 1, 2, 3, and a line with a parametric vector form given here. So this is a line in three-dimensional space. This it would be your, I mean, if we compare it with what's up here, this is your position vector, little a. This is your v vector that's parallel to the line. And uh, lambda is your parameter. OK. So I'm going to let, so up here, we, a would have, a would be the point associated with the position vector, and it would be 5, 0, 1. So let P be the closest point on, say, the line L to a given point B. All right. So to work this out, what do we need? We need the we need the vector AB. We need this dot product, and we already know what V is, so uh, or we need the length of V too. So that that should be okay. All right. So let, let's compute those things individually, and then we put them put them all together. All right. So the vector from one point to another point is just the difference in the position vectors. By this, I mean you know the vector from the origin to B minus the vector from the origin to A. So OB would just be this written as a column. OA is right here, or the A is right here. So you work in a component-wise fashion. 1 minus negative 5 gives you the first component. 2 minus 0 gives you the second component. 3 minus 1 gives you the third component. OK, so we want to compute the length of AB and then square it. Okay, now the length, you could, um, like I'm just going to calculate the length of it um, with the square root sign. You don't have to do that because you're squaring the length, so you could actually get rid of the square root sign here, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Okay, to compute the length of a vector, you take the components, you square them, and you add them together. So that's going to give us uh, root 24. So, of course, the square of this length is 24. Okay, what else do we need here? We need this dot product. Okay, this dot product is going to be the dot product of this vector with this vector. Now, remember when we have these sort of column vectors, we multiply just in a component-wise fashion, and you add up uh, the multiplication. So negative 4 times 1 plus 2 times negative 3 plus 2 times negative 2. Okay, so it's going to be negative 4 minus 6 minus 4. So it's going to be negative 14. Okay. What else do we need? We need the length of V. Furthermore, this is the last bit we need. The length of V, take the components, square them, add them together. Okay, so I'm going to get 9 plus 1 plus 4. Uh, root 14. It's all square root. Okay, hence, let's put it all together. The distance is just this, squared minus this squared. So that is, so this is uh, 24. 
Okay, I've got this dot product which is negative 14 over the length of of v which is root 14 so I square it so you're basically going to be left with a negative root 14 in there which when you square is going to give you 14 so I've got this and the answer is root 10 okay so in that example the distance between the point B and the given line is root 2 units Okay, so that is how you can calculate the distance from a given point to a given line. Um, it involves this, the projection of vectors, either the scalar projection or the vector projection, whichever one you want to use, and Pythagoras' theorem. Now, in forthcoming videos, I'm going to continue my um, uh, introduction to vectors, and the last few videos have all been about multiplication of vectors via the dot product. The next step is to talk about the cross product. So uh, that, that gives you a whole new world of, of um, applications and um, also when you cr take the cross product to vectors, you get a vector which is different to the, the dot product. So I hope you can join me for those presentations. If you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, put them in the comments section. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you can join me for the next installment. Bye.